and then you had to revise the inspection and then you still get it not approved. You revise right up to maybe revision three, revision four, revision five is keep getting rejected. So in this today's lesson, we're going to find out exactly what might really be the reason why you keep getting your inspections not approved. Good everyone, you are Shemako Enterprises. Today we are going to find out now why when we raise inspections on site, it could either be material inspection, inspection of work, or probably um, testing and commissioning. So while carrying out the different inspections, perhaps you've raised inspections, maybe in revision zero, and then you got um, the inspection was uh, not approved. And then you had to revise the inspection and then still get it not approved. You revise right up to maybe revision three, revision four, revision five is keep getting rejected. So in this today's lesson, we're going to find out exactly what might really be the reason why you keep getting your inspections not approved. Why do we have inspections not approved even after number of revisions? So the, today we're going to be discussing exactly what are the different reasons why when we raise inspections on site, we keep getting them not approved after a series of different revisions that we keep submitting and we still coming back or getting our inspections not approved or um, rejected. So I'm going to take us now to this chart. So we get to see the different inspections, the different, different revision numbers as well as the different descriptions as well. Um, as you can see here, we have revision number which we have um, IR001. Just say, for example, you raise an inspection and you, you have the inspection request number, which is IR001. So it, it varies with different projects. Say, for example, you're working in a project in the pro as per the project um, description number, which they had to put, you have to follow as per the different numbers that you have in the different projects. So in this case, I just took an, as an example whereby we have IR0001, which is a reference number of the IR or inspection request. So we have revision, which the first revision was zero. And then here we have latest or absolute. So we have the either latest or absolute. So we have revision zero, discipline, which is electrical. And then we have location, which is uh, located in a reading room level, ground floor, inspection, request, description. So we have it as such, which is inspection for installation of GI conduits in ground floor reading room. And it's been raised by the contractor date, as you can see here, 23rd April, 2024. And then commented date, as you can see here, 2 May, um, 2024. These are the, no the number of days as, uh, as of which you raise inspection and been um, commented from the consultant side. And then the status of it is C. We now move to revision one, and then we still had code C. We move to revision three, revision two, sorry, and then we still had code C. So these codes, they are just some sort of uh, appraiser, which in some other project we can get them as one, two, three, code one, code two, code three, or code A, code B, code C. In the same way, we raise again another inspection, which is 002. We had it as revision zero. We raise the inspection for inspection for installation of wire pulling in ground floor reading room, same area. And then we had code C. We moved to revision one, code C. We moved to revision two, and we still had code C. So I would like to bring this to our attention. So while we raise inspections on site, might be working as a site engineer, electrical inspector, or probably QQC electrical engineer or mechanical engineer. So while you're working on site, once we have inspection requests that we submit to the consultant, we have to as well make sure that when we are following up or listening with the consultant, at the same time, when we have the inspection requests that are being released from the consultant side, we have to make sure that we go through them and also make sure that we look at all the different comments that are being generated from the consultant. So we go through it, make sure that we look at the comments and check as well on site to make sure that they are being rectified. So I'm going to, dri I'm going to drive us through so we get to see some of those reasons which might make our inspection request that we submit 
not approved. So um, as we've seen the chart, which we have um, different inspections that were being submitted to the consultant for review and approval. Like I said, it could be either inspection of work, inspection of material, or inspection of testing and commissioning. So when we raise inspection, as we saw on the chart, from revision zero, we got uh, code C or probably code um, three, which shows that the inspections are not approved. And when they are not approved as such, which is code C or probably code three, we'll have them with some comments. So at the same time, we have to make sure that when we, we, we raise inspection from revision zero, while we get it not approved, we have to at the same time make sure that we go through the different comments that have been generated from the consultant side. So we go through the comments, also make sure that we go on site to make or to verify if um, these comments have been rectified on site or not. And so we have to make sure that we check at all time to ensure that the different comments have been done or closed on site. So if we, we, we know they are all closed on site, we have to make sure that we prepare as well um, a comment sheet, which we are going to put down or list down all the different comments which were generated by the consultant. We respond to them as well. When we do, do that, we take a printout attached to the inspection before we revise and then submit to the consultant for review again and approval, which would be revision one. At the same time, we have to as well make sure that we check if we have um, um, NCLs, which are all non conformance reports, or SOR, which is site observation report. So we have to make sure that we check if we have any of these, which is um which were generated by the consultant as well we check if um we have these either ncrs or sors which are still open pertaining to the same inspections that we are planning to revise so we have to check that if we have um, open ncrs or open sors we have to make sure that we close them and before closing them we we, we provide a corrective action, which we are going to submit to the consultant. If it is okay by the consultant, then we move on now to make sure that we close it by preventing it now. So we close it as per how we've um, um, uh, prepared on the corrective action. We close it, make sure that they are being closed prior to um, revising the set inspection and make sure that we submit for review and approval to the consultant. So it's um, really good it's not okay for us to have um, revision zero and then we just move straight by revising the inspection without even checking what comments we had in the previous revision so this is the major reason why we keep getting rejection of our inspection requests that we submit and we keep submitting or keep revising and we keep getting the inspections not approved so we have to make sure that we we go through all these different steps like i said which is very important and to ensure that we don't have a um, series of inspections that have been submitted and we get rejection or probably they are not approved. It's going to as well hinder the, the timely completion of the project as well as um, hinder the quality aspect as well of the project, which is very important. We have to make sure that we take note of it. And also if you feel or you have some other reasons why perhaps you have been carrying out your project, if you have other reasons which might as well hinder or make uh, IRs or inspection requests that we submit get, get rejected or not approved, you put down in the comment section. Thank you very much. And till then, you're watching Macogan Enterprises.